This is episode 16 of Survival Medicine, and this is on prolonged field treatment of gunshot wounds. Well, this is a really good question that came up uh, from basically two of the viewers. Uh, one was the Haas USMC, and the other was Bones World 98. Now, their question came after the last video on combat casualty care, and they asked, what can you do for extended care for traumatic wounds like gunshot, shrapnel, and puncture wounds when you can't get to the hospital? Um, so basically trying to say, what can we do in the field uh, to maximize our chances of a good outcome um, when uh, standard therapies are not going to be available? Well, this is a really interesting question um, and a tough one, actually. Uh, and so we're going to look at some things that we can do, and we're going to look uh, a little bit uh, in the past with like Civil War and World War I data um, and how things have evolved. All right, so let's basically start with a gunshot wound, and I'm going to use a gunshot wound for any kind of penetrating trauma, whether it's shrapnel or, or otherwise. So if it's non-life-threatening, let's say it's you know through the forearm or through the upper arm or through the lower leg. Um, so number one, despite uh, the old TV movies uh, where they have the knife that they hold over the candle to sterilize it and a swig of whiskey and dig the bullet out, don't mess with it leave the bullet in. You're going to do more damage to the tissues trying to get the bullet out than just leaving it in. So don't mess with it. Uh, the other thing is if it's traveled through a bone, um, and it may be kind of hard to tell with all the swelling, uh, but if you suspect that it might have fractured a bone, then you need to stabilize the fracture. Put a splint on. But put the splint on in a way that you can still access the wound uh, to care for the wound because wound uh, care and cleaning is going to be one of the most important things you can possibly do. Now early on and also subsequent um, you know, treatments, you need to irrigate the wound. Lots and lots of water uh, and clean water. Uh, the old uh, saying is that the solution to pollution is dilution. So the more water you can use the better. Uh, this can be tap water as long as uh, you know, the system is intact with, uh, with the water being clean. Now, then you need to have a meticulous wound care. This means changing wound dressings several times a day, uh, making sure the wound stays healthy. Uh, and the reason you want to change the wound dressings is that when you put uh, a moist uh, dressing onto the wound and as it dries, it's going to adhere to the, the kind of tissue and goo that's uh, at the base of the wound. And as you pull that dressing off, it's going to rip some of the things off and basically take with it uh, some of the bad things that, that may be growing in the wound and then putting another sterile clean dressing on after you irrigate. So this wound care will be one of the most vital things because if that wound gets infected or if you get gangrene then uh, this is going to be a very very bad day for you. Now antibiotics are also a good thing. Uh, traumatic wounds are dirty by definition uh, and look if you look at the last video um, the recommendation one is the moxifloxin uh, I think that's a very uh, nice medicine as long as you're not allergic to it. Uh, it's just a once a day 400 milligrams uh, and that should cover most things. Now as you're healing, you've got to have good nutrition. Your body needs all the tools uh, available so that the, it can heal the wound and, and uh, make this better. Uh, so that's non-life-threatening wounds. So what about wounds to the chest, abdomen, or other major wounds with arterial bleeding? Well, I think I can sum up what you can do in the field with a uh, one slide and that is you're out of luck this is not going to be a good day so if you have a major chest wound major abdominal wound major arterial bleed head wound uh, and you can't get to modern uh, medical care this is not going to turn out well penetrating trauma is a surgical disease that's the kind of the fundamental piece to all of this so if we go back in time, let's go back. This is to 1862 uh, gunshot wounds. Uh, so we're going to look at Civil War and World War I because that is probably the best approximation of what things would be like if you have to care for wounds like this in the field. Um, so let's look at chest wounds. Chest wound mortality in the Civil War was uh, 62%. And I saw lots of different statistics going through a bunch of books and research that I did. And these numbers... Uh, have a little bit of a range, but uh, this is kind of the most common 
area or the co most common number that I've, I've found that I think is realistic. So if you got shot in the chest, the chances that you die in the Civil War was 62%, World War I, 56%, and then it drops down to World War II and Vietnam to being almost single digits, or in Vietnam, it was single digits. Now, why is that? That's because they put mobile field army hospitals, the mashes, um, up front, close to the front lines, and they had rapid extrication with helicopters. So you take those surgical interventions away with, with uh, forward advanced medical care, and you're back to the Civil War where most people are going to die from a chest wound. Now, you would imagine getting shot in the chest is worse than getting shot in the abdomen, but that's not true. Getting shot in the abdomen, you have a much higher chance of dying, and that's because anything that penetrates the intestines, stomach, that's going to allow basically poo to get into your abdominal cavity. And having poo inside your abdominal cavity is never going to turn out well. This is going to set up for massive infection and sepsis and, and, uh, and lead to a uh, prolonged spiraling death, uh, where it's a, one of an infectious death rather than a, a specific trauma death. And as an aside, if you're shot and you're going to die due to uh, sort of the, the mortal uh, nature of the wound, this instant death, it's probably going to be within the first eight minutes of being shot. Now, to give you some other uh, background information about gunshot wounds, again, using the Civil War, most of the wounds were to the extremities, 71%. Now, that isn't always good either because the mortality, if you got shot in the knee joint, uh, over half of those people died. Uh, and then another key part is if you're uh, away from standard medical care, uh, a lot of soldiers died, or actually more soldiers died, of disease than actual injuries at a rate of two to one. Again, this is Civil War data, uh, but again, if you're in a situation where everything is broken down, then I think this would probably hold true even in a modern situation. And now we do have things to combat that with antibiotics, but you have to realize that disease, just rampant disease, uh, will become a major, major factor. So again, kind of summarizing, what can you do? You got to keep the wound clean. You got to irrigate it. Use clean water. Control the bleeding when you can. Early antibiotics. Uh, if it's a chest wound, uh, you can put in a chest tube, uh, like with the needle going into the chest cavity, but you'll need a flutter valve. So uh, one thing you can do is take the finger off of a rubber glove you punch the needle through that finger, uh, and then it can go into the chest. And that will allow for a, a seal to occur, a one-way valve, so that uh, air can escape the lung cavity, but it doesn't go back in and fill to cause that tension pneumothorax that I talked about last time. Nutrition is going to be very key, and again, stabilize the fractures. Um, so when you're away from modern hospital care, advanced medical care, you're going to be down to the basics. Keeping wounds clean, stabilizing it, feeding them good food, and giving antibiotics when you have them. Again, penetrating trauma is a surgical disease, and if you want good outcomes, then you're going to have to find a way to get them to a definitive care situation. Now, if you want to see uh, how things have progressed and, and sort of the advanced treatments that are now being uh, offered to our soldiers on the field. Uh, you can go to this uh, Life and Death in the War Zone. Uh, you can watch the whole uh, PBS special. And, but that will give you a, an example of what it takes to have good outcomes on the battlefield. So when we're talking about single-digit mortality for penetrating chest or abdominal wounds, uh, currently, this is what it takes to get to that. But anyways, I thought this was a great question. Um, it's nice to know that people are thinking about uh, uh, all the different possibilities, and I hope this kind of gives you some uh, some answers to the questions and a few uh, fundamentals. Again, I th thanks for all the input, and thanks for watching.